knee examination. You want to be a volunteer? Yes. Excellent. Good. Thank you. So, so knee examination again. Sit down for me. Yeah. So, again, look, feel, move. That is exactly the same. Front, side, back. When it comes to lower limb, you start with always a gate, isn't it? Not? That's why I put gate on the top because you forget the gate invariably because um, examiners start interacting with you, but in OSCE they don't interact with you. Okay. So let us start now. Can I have a look at your gait now? Okay. Can you walk up and down for me? That's good. Okay. So in I okay, that's fine. So it's very difficult to interpret the few steps. Okay. With the history itself, you know how painful it is. So add an element of antalgia or not, whether you look for anticipate things in the history, and it's very difficult to predict in that one, okay, unless they have got, got gross antalgia. So look from the looking from the front, okay, again on side and back, don't go from that one always at the level of the joint, okay, at the level of the joint. So always one joint above and one joint below, you have to look for every joint, okay. So there is no obvious deformity, that means in this plane you look for varus or valgus, okay, and then no obvious wasting of the quadriceps mechanism. You don't need to add all the muscles and things, just you can vaguely tell no wasting. And then you go a little forward and then imagine it is a left knee, there is some scar there, okay, and in the history you know whether he had any intervention or not, otherwise it will be a traumatic scar. And then can you turn to the side for me, please? Okay, again looking on the side, there is no obvious deformity which I am looking for flexion, no obvious wasting of the muscles and again you go forward for the skin literally touching the patient. You can even stretch and see whether there is any marks. Skin over is normal. Can you turn to the back for me? Here you do not need to comment on the deformity when you go to the third plane because you already comment on the frontal plane. So here you look for any swelling or wasting, skin over is normal, okay. And now. Feel. You want to lie down for me, please. So I am coming back, but instead of for convenience, I am coming to the right side, okay, and make the patient not straight bed for this sitting, so that they're comfortable. Whereas hip examination is straight couch without any softness, okay. Or do you can you come up a little bit up? Thank you. Are you comfortable there, or shall I? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Again, feel. The easy way to remember is x-axis and y-axis, okay. So imagine um, that is a patella, quadriceps mechanism, patella tendon, tibial tuberosity and then the joint line comes, is it not? So the easy way to know is what is that axis? Is the y-axis, is it not? So y-axis is quadriceps, so if you forget, oh I forgot to uh, examine the patella or I forgot the medial joint line, you do not need to forget anything. Just examine along the y-axis, x-axis and then z-axis is the patellofemoral joint, okay. So it is y, x and then z. So it is easy to uh, palpate with slight flexion, ideally 90 degree flexion. But for patellar tendinosis or any patellar pathology or it's e the, the um, signs are elicited easily with extension, okay. They have more pain on extension not in flexion. So it's up to you whichever is convenient you can do. So I'm starting with quadriceps mechanism, okay. First is warmth, okay. Warmth if you want, skin over is normal. Next is soft tissue and what do you tell the patient? I'll be palpating you. If there's any pain let me know. I won't be asking you again, okay. So quadriceps mechanism, no tendinitis, patella, patella tendon and the tibial tuberosity. I can also feel for any synovial thickening that is 2 centimeter above the patella on the sides of the rectus femoris because rectus femoris is difficult to palpate the synovium thickening. So it's on the side, I can feel the sign, can you feel that, okay. So synovial thickening is normal, okay. And then for the Y axis is finished, now coming to the X axis, you can foil for the medial joint line. It's, if it's difficult, just bend the knee and ask, see for the medial joint line, lateral joint line, okay. Because I'm teaching, I'm not looking at his face, I know he's not got a problem, otherwise look at the face. And then continue at the back, you can straighten at this stage because popliteal swelling come up more on extension than flexion. Okay, so there is no obvious swelling at the back. So this axis is finished, that axis is finished, Z axis, okay, 
and look for any effusion all what you do is, is it is a jerk people don't do it correctly it is like suddenly like a cardiac massage okay it is it is like that otherwise it will not so empty the suprapetal pouch and then like that okay so if there is significant uh, minimal effusion it won't show up if it is significant effusion show up or if it is a minimal all you do is empty the gutter on the lateral side or on the medial side and you will see the bulge but here it is no effusion okay so z axis continuing you have to feel for the petal move it like that hold it on the side okay and then rock on the trochlea of the femur okay so if there is a pain there will be grating any pain no okay so, okay so y x z finished okay look feel move so movement can you always keep a hand on the joint can you bend the knee and then kick straight slowly as much straight as possible can you straight straighten okay and then look for any extensor lag there is no extensor lag okay that means the quadriceps muscle has, is intact powerful to straighten the leg fully if it, there is an extensor lag like that then you passively extend and see whether it is correctable or not to see if it is a joint problem or a muscle weakness okay extensor lag is active extension lagging behind full passive extension okay now look feel and move is done and then i have done active now i want to know how much is having passively okay is it hyperextending you look from the side 10 degrees normal hyperextension can you bend as much as possible okay he has got full flexion if there is any doubt bend the other knee and find out okay clear so which is done so look feel feel move finish and now coming to the special test special test yeah ligaments i am looking for models okay just have a look for a model if there is any here no models skeleton missing okay that's fine okay okay so basically front to back easy rumbles front to back every joint has got front to back stability even that one okay front to back side to side okay and there is also a um, um, wall or plate as well in the fingers okay so here starting with the front to back i will tell you easy way to hold it's not easy to hold big people high bmi people as they you show in the video like that and all so easy way to do is just bend the knee okay and sitting there I don't think it's a good idea. Okay, you may, okay. So just all I do is, okay, hold like that. Okay, relax the hamstrings, relax the hamstrings, grip the bone, not the soft tissue. What are people do like that? Okay, so don't do on the soft tissue. Okay, so re relax the hamstrings, hold the thumb on the joint. Okay, and then you do your whole body should go like that. Okay, it's not like that you look for any if there should be a normal play with the end point there is an end point and the anterior cruciate is normal is enough if you do only one test for a medical school but if you want to proceed you can do one more test same thing but in less flexion it's called latchman's test it's difficult for you to do to gr so relax now straighten your knee you start with straight knee okay relax the knee like that grab the bone not the muscle and then okay do like that literally you are grabbing yeah yeah you want to see this side okay so basically relax like that okay if you don't relax if the tighten is difficult okay relax like that roughly 20 degree of flexion grab the bone femur and tibia not the quadriceps muscle or calf muscle okay so grab that and then literally you are you are freezing the joint and do like that okay it's difficult but you, i would they would not penalize if you don't do this test okay just go for one test and finish it and before that before doing the anterior drive test you look on the side for any posterior sagging okay look for any posterior sagging if there is a posterior sagging it is a posterior cruciate would have gone okay so you have to start with look and then then relax hamstrings and do that one okay so that is front to back stability is done next is 
side to side. Again, in the books, if they may give like that, like that, you may not be able to hold the leg like that and do it. The easy way is roughly do that, okay? Incline like that, okay? Like that, and then just, that's all, okay? He will feel the pressure, okay? Clear? Okay. okay. Why don't they tell us to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Good, okay? Uh, so, to lift the leg. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you will become tired by the end of the examination, okay? So that, because if you do your whole clinic with holding like that, like that, that's all, okay? So next is like that, okay? And then just, that's all. So you literally you're trying to open up the joint. Imagine you're opening up the joint, okay? So side to side stability, you will see two abnormalities. One is increased pain, which is abnormal, which is great strain, or no pain, but opening which is for complete tear, okay? Which is unlikely for you in the exam, okay? So front to back done, side to side is done. Next is twisting, okay? McMurray's test is given in different books in different ways. You don't need to worry about which is correct. All you're doing is extend, twisting and extending, okay? So while you extend, you twist. While you extend, you twist. One in internal rotation, another one in external rotation, that's all. Ask the patient, where is it painful? If it's painful here, can it be lateral meniscus? It can't be. It should be medial meniscus. Okay? If it's painful there, it is lateral meniscus. So don't split the hair and try to waste time, which is what? Okay? So, so can you bend the knee for me as much as possible? Full flexion. Okay? So I told you, twist and extend. Let us twist out first and extend. Next is twist in and extend. Clear? So twist out and extend is cup the heel. Externally rotate. Okay, I'm twisting out now. Clear? Support on the side because you're twisting out. And then extend and kick yourself. Okay? Like that. Okay? So, yeah, that, that's why I told you. You ask the patient where it's painful. That is typically for medial, but it can be painful on either side. Okay? And then next is cup the heel, internally rotate for internal twisting. Internally support and then kick the examiner. Okay? So that is for the lateral meniscus, but it can be any positive on both sides. So basically, twist and extend. One is twisting out, one is twisting in, and just extend. Simple. Okay? So all I do is like that and then like that. Okay? So it's like a dance, okay? Like that and then like that. Okay? So all if it is painful at the very beginning. It's a posterior horn. If it is in the middle, it's a middle body. If it is at the end, it's anterior horn, but forget it. Okay? Okay. Okay. So, so, are you okay? Yeah. So, we are done front to side to side, and then any impingement between the meniscus, and then the petal. If there is a young patient with a history of subluxation of the joint, then you do this. Otherwise, you don't do on your elderly patient or anything. Okay? So if there is a positive history, all you do is try to dislocate the patella outside. Look at the patient's face. At the same time, bend the knee. It's difficult to bend the knee. Can you bend the knee? And if they tell, if they are apprehensive, they, will, they won't bend it. They will stop it. So simple. Okay? So patella apprehension test. So <laughs>